Today's video dedication is for Whiskey Jack. Thalia and the Gitrog Monster versus Arcades with a effectively a one lander, so we'll have to ship that one back. Okay, that's looking much better. Really like the fetch with Crucible of Worlds and the um and the Lotus Cobra. So we'll get rid of the Nemesis Mask. Additional land drops would be good so that we can start to actually accelerate our mana with the Wooded Foothills and the Crucible, but yeah, not going to complain too much about the opening hand that we've got here. Our opponent just starts off with a tap land, which is fine. There's a Dark Depths for us, which is largely useless at the moment. So we'll try and generate some mana with the Wooded Foothills next turn and the Lotus Cobra. And it's a Wall of Omens, the first defender for our opponent. Still at seven cards in hand. Okay, signing blood, so we can go for that this turn. Lotus Cobra and Fetches generates us three mana, as long as we bring in an untapped land with it, so that's pretty good. We'll go at Wooded Foothills, and I can get down a Tricycle land here, and play out the Crucible of Worlds, I think. And then signing blood onto ourselves is going to lose us some life. Exploration is a good drop there, so go Exploration, get down the forest, and we can still go for... Do we go for Corsair of Crufix instead? I think I do go for Corsair of Crufix instead, because I don't want my opponent to worry about a fetch and Lotus Cobra and the Crucible. They might go for removal. All right, Tyler's Tracker is excellent as well. We can start drawing some cards with Tyler's Tracker and hopefully and hopefully get into some stuff that we need there. And it's a Vine Trellis from our opponent. Just getting down tap lands again, so our opponent's going much slower than us, which is obviously really good for us. All right, and Amiria Shepherd we're not quite ready for, so I think I'm fine to shuffle that away. Um, let's go for the Crucible, first of all. Not going to be able to make landfall into the Tyler's Tracker, unfortunately. So we'll just go Wooded Foothills. That will gain us a life, obviously makes us a mana with the Lotus Cobra as well. And then we shuffle away the Wooded Foothills. We'll shuffle away the Emiria with the Wooded Foothills. Uh, we'll just play Savannah with that. Uh, okay, Abzan Charm isn't terrible. And now we can go at Tyler's Tracker and make landfall into that, because we did get into the additional land every turn that we were hoping for. So Tyler's Tracker makes us a clue token, which is two mana to sacrifice and draw. Um... I think we'll get down our commander here, so we'll have to shuffle away the Abzan Charm, which not too bothered about. We can bring in a shot land in tapped because uh, that will generate us a mana regardless. Gets us another clue token, another life. And we are taking life to the Ancient Tomb, so it's good to be able to generate this extra life from the Corsa of Crufix. And down comes Thalia and the Gitrog Monster. It gives us another land to make. Um, I'll grab the scrub land off the top though. And there's Elvish Reclaimer, which goes well with the Dark Depths, so we might be able to combo off in the next few turns. Um, with the additional mana from the Lotus Cobra in the land, I might as well crack a clue token. Plus counter on the Tyler's Tracker, and we'll draw into the Elf. Digs us a card deeper into our library. Okay, there's a Solemn as well. Uh, no point swinging in, we've just got two power creatures there. Not going to tangle well against the walls. Alright, seeing the Arcades, the Strategist, come into play tapped. And then they play the land into Steel Wall, again coming into play tapped, so they've only got one blocker. But six cards in hand, and they did of course draw a card off the Steel Blocker. Alright, there is a Gitrog Monster, which is a means of card draw for us, so... Cracker Clue token. Alright, there's a Forest on top, so... Yeah, we'll get down the Gitrog Monster here, because I want to see fetches with that and then I'll go for the wooded foothills simply because it will uh, have us draw cards with the gitrog monster we can shuffle away the land on the top so shuffle wooded foothills draws us into the forest before we shuffle with the wooded foothills actually and then we're shuffling away a dam over there so let's just throw out the bayou okay and there's a far seek on top which I'm not really bothered about but we're going to draw into that regardless so play a fetch from the bin again and we've got our engine pretty good here. Crack the fetch again. We've only got one more land that we can get with the wooded foothills. Only one more forest left, so that is going to switch us off somewhat. 
Seeing Ancient Green Warden on top now, which I'll definitely want to draw into, because if our opponent removes the Crucible, then we're going to need that. So I'll probably keep it in hand for after a board wipe. Our opponent's probably got the board wipes that get rid of big powered creatures. So draw into the uh, Ancient Green Warden. Get our last land with the Wooded Foothills, which is now useless to us. I mean, we can still crack it and draw cards with the uh, Gitrog Monster, but we're not accelerating our mana any. Alright, and there's a fetch on top, so let's shuffle that away with the far seek. Yeah, that's shame, yeah. Our opponent's getting pretty sick of us doing the solitaire thing here. It's just taking us a while to get things going. Um, yeah, we weren't drawing into anything too incredible. Um, the law would have eventually helped us because we could have put that on our commander and then uh, dealt one damage to each of the blockers that our opponent had to block with. Obviously, the plan there ultimately was to go for Dark Depths. Would have given us an indestructible 2020 and could have easily fetched out the Thespian stage with crop rotation, which we were going to draw into soon, or the Elvish Reclaimer, which I would have got down this turn. So, yeah, decent start for us. Just took us a while to set everything up. Trying again up against Urza this time, and yes, we will keep that one. I think we are on the draw. Oh no, we're on the play here, so get down the tricycle land, start things off. Happy to be on the play here because we've only got three drops in hand and yeah, if we have a turn in hand against our opponent then it means that these are much less slow. Alright, the Soul Guide Lantern, that could be relevant because as we saw in the last game we do want to uh, replay fetches from the bin quite a lot. And uh, there we are, a Conduit of Worlds. So we'll just get down the two drop and threaten a removal spell or something. Alright, our opponent... Getting rid of that straight away just for a card draw, so I wonder if he's struggling on lands. I'm hoping we don't see a pretty fast scoop this game. Uh, do we get down the tireless tracker? Yeah, I think we can start hitting our opponent pretty quickly if he's struggling on lands, so we'll get the summoning sickness away from that, because we can make it decently big. I mean, three a hit for three every turn isn't nothing. A heuristic study. So we're going for a three drop next turn anyway, so we can pay for that. There is a scape shift which will set us up nicely with fields, so get down Thespian Stage, makes a clue token, and then it's a four mana cultivate for us. Obviously got another clue token from the cultivate land coming in and now Talus Tracker hits our opponent for the first time. And there's an unwinding clock, so they will get to untap their seat of the synod every turn. That is an artifact land. Might be relevant if they have a swan song or something like that. Anguished on making onto the Ristic Study might be relevant. Yeah, let's drop the planes. Then it can be a 4 mana Anguished on making over there. Testing our opponent for Spell Pierce or anything like that. And it doesn't look like they have it, so let's crack a clue token to buff the Tireless Tracker. Puts a plus counter on it, obviously draws us a card as well. Alright, and there's another fetch for us, which goes very well with the Conduit of Worlds and... The uh, Field of the Dead, if we manage to get that online, which I might look at doing next turn, try and really outrace my opponent. They do shock down a Hallowed Fountain. Okay, there's Padim, so giving their artifacts hexproof. They will draw a card with that as well as it stands now, unless we get down the Conduit of Worlds next turn, which I'm not entirely sure we're going to bother doing. Okay, there's an Admonition Angel. We don't have enough white mana at the moment. Yeah, that's a shame. So let's go for a fetch now. We can make more white mana. Or we could just go for the scape shift this turn. See, they're holding up double blue this time. Yeah, if they've got an answer for scape shift, then so be it. Um, we'll go for the painful truths first. That can be at draw three cards, and they might want to counter this to keep us off drawing three cards. They are holding up priority. But deciding to like that. Three Ramanap Splendid Reclamation is good as well, so... Yeah, we'll go after the scape shift. If they've got counter magic, then we want it out of their hand anyway. They allow this to resolve, though. So one, two... Don't want to let go of Thespian Stage. So that is three, four, five, and six lands we're searching up. And we will have seven lands in play for the field. So we want Field of the Dead. Yavamaya to make green mana. Urborg for black, making all of our lands at least bayous. Want the Dark Depths for the combo. Cabal Coffers as well, seeing as how we're getting down Urborg. And then a tapped Shockland would be good. Uh, just some white mana. Can be Godless Shrine. 
So Tyler's Tracker sees those six lands come into play. Yet Field of the Dead does as well and makes us a bunch of zombie tokens. And then we've got some lands in the bin now to grab back with the Splendid Reclamation and get even more landfall next turn. Which might save for after a board wipe on our opponent. Our opponent might be letting us do stuff here to get a board wipe on us. Yeah, so let's swing in with the 4-3. They have a 1-4 in the way, so can't block us really well there. If they do block, it will suggest a board wipe. And they did let the damage through, so down to 27. They do draw a card from the Padim as well. Haven't seen any ramp from our opponent, unfortunately. There's a Forsaken Monument. They don't have any lands that will tap for colourless mana, so... Yeah, I mean, that'll give a buff to the Constructs when they eventually get them out, but... Yeah, I don't see if that's going to do much use to our opponent at all, really. Let's just throw out the Admonition Angel here, and then we can get Hexproof off our opponent's stuff and start stealing it away here, I think. Actually, we're shy on white mana again. Alright, in that case, I'll tap down the Cabal Coffers for much less mana than I would have liked. Still get 7 mana, though. Play the Splendid Reclamation, and this should set up our white mana quite nicely. And, of course, that triggers the Tireless Tracker a bunch more for more clue tokens, and we get more zombies. But more importantly, have all of our mana set up here. So pretty much sacrifice nothing from the uh, escape shift last turn. And then we'll just throw out a forest. And then I'll crack a couple of clue tokens with the surplus mana. So that makes the tireless tracker even bigger. And now we've got the mana held up for the thespian stage into the dark depths. Uh, draw back into the Emeria Shepherd and an Avenger of Zendikar. So two big beaters. And speaking of beating, we'll go in at our opponent. Could still be holding up the board wipe over there. They go down to 9. Drawing a card again with Padeen. Yeah, and our opponent scoops it up there. That's fair enough. It was a bit more of a one-sided Abzan landfall game, that one. But you got to see what the deck can do even without the uh, Thalia. Thalia is not really all that uh, integral to the plan. It just gets you a little bit more um, utility here and there. But obviously we didn't need it here. We were pretty much dunking on our opponent from the offset. Because I think the... Power levels of the decks are pretty mismatched here, or our opponent was just unlucky. Anyway, hopefully you all enjoyed it. If you want to see more from Thalia and the Gitrob Monster, then be sure to leave it a like and let me know in the comments section, because the videos have been waning recently, so I'm not sure if people are actually bothered about my videos anymore or not, or maybe they're just waiting for the new set, I'm not sure. Anyway, hopefully you all enjoyed it. I'm Travel Kai. Thank you for watching.